permission granted to import sugar once more. 250,000 kilos of paddy confiscated by the Consumer Affairs Authority from a warehouse in Anuradhapura. Farmers express dissent over unacceptable behavior of officials. <laughs> Was a land in Bambalapitiya illegally acquired? Police launches manhunt to locate the mayor of Hambantota. New fungal disease stemming from COVID-19 discovered. Experts predict it could be more severe than the black fungus. As it was mentioned in the headlines, the government decided to suspend the importation of sugar and thereafter gazetted a maximum retail price for the good. However, the Commissioner General of Essential Services, Major General Senarat Nunhalla, claims permission has now been granted to import sugar. He also revealed that the Minister of Finance had instructed officials to take necessary steps to import sugar. Meanwhile, State Minister of Consumer Protection Lasant Ali Gewana states that the current stock of sugar in the country will be sufficient for about two and a half months. Currently, we have around 105,000 metric tons of sugar in the country, which will be sufficient for around two and a half months. Therefore, our attention has been directed to announce lax import restrictions in this regard. The reason for this is it takes around two months to import a consignment of sugar. It has always been a practice to maintain buffer stocks of essential goods within the country which will be sufficient for at least two months. Therefore, we should definitely introduce less stringent import restrictions on sugar. Close to 250,000 kilograms of paddy stored in a warehouse in the Parasan Gaswabal Pandukabepura Andradapura was confiscated by the Consumer Affairs Authority. <laughs> According to our correspondent, this stock of paddy was handed over to the Paddy Marketing Board using 15 lorries. Andradapura District Station in charge, Senior Investigating Officer of Consumer Affairs Authority BACP Pereira said that stock of paddy included Nadu, Samba, Kiri Samba, and Kekulu. Under the government directive, unregistered mills and warehouses where paddy is stored illegally in the Andhradhapura district will continue to be confiscated. A group of opposition members of the Dehiyat Takandiya Pradesh Sabha arrived at the Pradesh Sabha premises in a protest march today demanding a proper price to be announced for paddy. The protest march, which commenced from opposite the Deyat Takandia bus stand, then proceeded towards the Pradesha Sabha premises. The price of pesticides skyrocketed. We went through many hardships to reap this harvest, but there is no one to purchase our produce. A farmer would trade in stocks of paddy to purchase essential goods required for his household. By today, farmers cannot do that. Both the farmer and trader are left helpless. Farmers have to survive for six months through the income they generate from the sale of paddy. How are they to survive now? All we want is a guaranteed price. Purchase a kilo of Nadu at 65 rupees, Samba at 75 rupees and Kiri Samba at 90 rupees. That is our only request. The joint farmers' organizations of Rajanganir charges that they are severely inconvenienced as the government has failed to stipulate a price for paddy. Farmers have been unable to sell their harvest. Government has set up a ceiling price of 50 rupees per kilo. However, stocks of paddy were purchased for 55 to 60 rupees during the yellow season. As farmers, we expect to sell these stocks for a fair price during this season. Our request was to at least set this ceiling price for 70 rupees for a kilo of paddy. 
but they have failed to pay attention to our pleas. Yesterday it was reported on news that a kilo of paddy will be purchased for 55 rupees. Still this price is unfair because during the last season they purchased a kilo of paddy for 56 rupees. This time the price has gone down by 1 rupee which is unfair to the farmers. <laughs> While farmers in Rajanganya continue to face difficulties without a proper price for paddy, many villages in Chilau are heavily inconvenienced owing to the fertilizer issue. Cultivating herbs is the main mode of income of many people in the villages beside the Dedru Oya in Chilau. Families in many villages including Sipikalana, Manuangama, Rambe Pitiya, Vilattava and Mugunuvatavana grow herbs. However, as of now, they point out that the harvest has dropped by 20% due to the fertilizer shortage. They request fertilizer for their cultivations to be successful. Meanwhile, sesame farmers of Ambilipitiya, Udavalave, Panahadua, Guru Madayaya, Telambugahatura and Thaligamayaya villages are heavily inconvenienced without a proper price for their harvest. Farmers point out that even though they cultivated seeds, as soon as the government order was issued, they are unable to cultivate their harvest at present. State Minister Tenuka Vidana Gamagi has urged all factions in the country to come together to overcome the economic crisis prevailing within the country. With the resignation of the central bank governor, a new governor was appointed. I think this new appointment will strengthen the government's cause. The new governor has a nine-year prior experience working at this position. Therefore, with his prior experiences, we firmly believe that he is someone who can strengthen our government's attempts in overcoming the current economic crisis. With the prevailing weather conditions, the Met Department has issued its daily forecast and according to it, showers or thunder showers will occur at times in Sabargamo, Western, Central and Northwestern provinces and in Gaul and Mathura districts. Showers or thunder showers will occur at several places elsewhere in the evening or night. Fairly heavy showers above 50 millimeters can be expected at some places in Sabargamo, Western and Central provinces and in Gaul and Mathura districts. General public is kindly requested to take adequate precautions to minimize damages caused by temporary localized strong winds and lightning during thunder showers. The sea areas extending from Gaul to Potuil via Hambantota and from Puttalam to Mana can be rough at times. According to the Med Department, the other sea areas around the island can be moderate. World Ozone Day, also known as the International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer, is observed every year on the 16th of September to focus on global action and attention on preservation of the ozone layer. In more local news, Secretary to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Admiral Professor Jainath Kolumbage said that no special mention was made to the United Nations Human Rights Commission regarding the 2019 April 21st attacks. Taking a look at a story that has made headlines this afternoon, the Babalapitiya police have launched a manhunt to arrest Eraj Fernando, the Mehambantata mayor, for assaulting two men. Police said a full-scale investigation was launched over an incident where the mayor of Hambantata had brutally assaulted a man over an attempted land grab in Colombo. A complaint was filed with the Bambalapitiya police claiming that a group led by Hambantota mayor had stormed into a property located down Kotalawal Avenue in Bambalapitiya on Tuesday night and assaulted two private security guards. One of the injured men said the group arrived in two SUVs and verbally abused them before carrying out an assault. He filed a complaint with the Bambalapitiya police claiming that the assault on two private security personnel was carried out for no valid reason. The group arrived and shouted demanding the gate to be opened. I opened the gate with the key. As soon as I opened, they attacked me. They said that we have to leave the premises. They said that our security services are useless and that they have appointed a new security service. I had a colleague called S.A. Karunadasa. They attacked him as well. 
one of his tooth broke. They hit my face. It was the mayor of Hambantota, Iraj Fernando. How low is it to assault someone like me who is a security officer? What did I do to deserve this? They said if we don't leave by 6 in the morning, they will kill us. Police spokesperson, SSP attorney at law, Nihal Taldua, speaking to News First, said several statements were recorded over the incident while a team was deployed to arrest the Hambantota mayor. It was also revealed that a lawsuit was filed with regard to the property in question. News First made several attempts to contact Eraj Fernando. However, these attempts were futile. In 2019, Hambantota mayor Eraj Ravindra Fernando was sentenced by the Hambantota High Court for threatening a group of UNP MPs. Moreover, Hambantota mayor Eraj Ravindra Fernando is among the accused over the alleged forceful occupation of land owned by Sri Lankans living overseas. Taking a look at another story that has made headlines this afternoon, Dr. Primali Jayasekar, a mycologist specialist in the Department of Mycology at the Medical Research Institute, stated that they, there are more fungal diseases reported in Sri Lanka other than the black fungus disease that affects those infected with COVID-19. She noted that a number of such cases was much higher than that of black fungal infections. When observing the numbers, we can see that the number of other fungal diseases being infected to COVID-19 patients are higher than that of the black fungi disease. We have identified more patient counts who have been infected with Aspergillus and Candida fungi. These fungi could cause more complications within COVID-19 patients. Yes, a patient infected with the Aspergillus will get complications. The growth of these fungi will start from the lungs and later it will spread all over the body. These patients are mainly those who had symptoms of COVID pneumonia conditions. What is the situation in Sri Lanka? Black fungi was first reported within COVID-19 patients from the month of June. But this black fungi is not a new disease to our country. When we take the COVID-19 patients who had been infected with the black fungi, two patients were reported from the Ratnapura Hospital during the month of June, three patients from the Trincomalee Hospital. During the month of August, we found a patient from the National Hospital in Colombo, and two more patients were discovered from the Colombo National Hospital within the month of September. Also within this month, patients were reported from the Ratnapura, Karapitiya and Kalaboila hospitals. Anyone can be infected with the disease. There are no exceptions. Therefore, we urge the public to follow precautionary methods in this regard. During the past seven days, the epidemiology unit said that the number of patients identified is below 3,000. However, by last evening, the epidemiology unit has added 3,000 COVID positive patients from the 6th to the 14th. When that number is added to those particular days, the number of cases confirmed through rapid antigen testing, some results go unidentified on the same day. Once they are confirmed, after assessing them with the national identity numbers, we make sure they are not previously recorded results. If they are not, we will count the numbers and we will we'll add it to the original number. This number added will not change the overall trend of cases reported. We add them to the original amount as soon as it is reported. In more local news, senior geologist Nilmini Taldena says although Sri Lanka is not situated in an earthquake prone region, earthquakes reported from the environs of Indonesia could pose the risk of tsunamis occurring and in turn affecting Sri Lanka. Speaking further, she expressed all necessary precautions have been taken to mitigate such a situation should it occur. Senior geologist Nilmini Taldena made this revelation while addressing a media briefing. Minister of Environment Mahinda Maravira was also present at the briefing. There are four permanent seismic data centers in Sri Lanka. There is no possibility to predict an earthquake. However, 
However, research depicts the possibility of a catastrophic earthquake occurring is quite low. However, if we are to assess the risk posed by earthquakes to Sri Lanka, tsunamis could occur due to several earthquakes occurring in the areas surrounding the Java and Sumatra. If such a situation does arise, we are better equipped than 2004 to face it. <laughs> Authority state steps will be taken to establish Sri Lanka's fifth permanent seismic data center in the western province. According to Minister Mahinda Maravira, the state will invest heavily in the project with initial steps already in motion. Taking a look at a developing story, a complaint was lodged at the CID today urging authorities to arrest those responsible for the incidents that transpired within the Anuradhapura and Balikada prisons. The Committee for Protecting Rights of Prisoners lodged the complaint. The State Minister has committed a major misdemeanor. This is a crime which can be examined under the provisions of the Offensive Weapons Act. Therefore, he must be arrested as soon as possible. He cannot absolve himself of this responsibility by simply resigning. Mrs. Sri Lanka Pushpika De Silva has stated in a statement on social media that she has nothing to do with the misconduct of a group including a state minister at the Anuradhapura prison. Pushpika De Silva states that she had withdrawn from political activities as she is preparing for the world pageant to be held in Las Vegas, USA early next year. She says her goal is to bring back the world beauty pageant crown to Sri Lanka after Rosi Sena Nayaka. She also said that it would be important to consult with the relevant parties or herself before spreading false information as she has devoted her time to social service and committed herself to the need of her child as a single parent. And that brings us to an end of this edition of Lunchtime News here on TV1. For the News First team, the voice of the people, I'm Sanita Sena Naika. Take care and stay safe.